Okay, today we got something different. I bought from militaryheritage.com out of Canada, which they, um, they're a source to get these uh, Indian made um, guns that do not have the touch hole drilled. Um, it's a Ketland um, trade pistol, essentially. And it has the markings, like London here. Um, there's some engraving, a little bit, on the back end of the barrel, on the tang. Um, also, trigger guard. And it actually does have um, kind of the outline of the cock, or the modernly called the hammer, and the lock plate. All has a double... Um, double border engraved on it and uh, it is stamped with Ketland um, fit and finish as you can see is uh, quite a bit to be desired but um, you know I have no problem with that I bought this for the brass barrel um, yeah I know there's there's a lot of divisive issues. Don't shoot them. I've watched plenty of people online um, shooting them. I'm, I guess I'm willing to give it a try. Um, I bought it mainly because the brass barrel, I think it, it looks cool. I'm going to defarb it and that's the main rest part of this video. Um, but the brass barrel, it doesn't have to be cleaned all the time. Um, it's a smooth bore. Um, I don't think I actually mic'd it yet, and I don't have my, I don't think I have my calipers here. I'll have to, I'll have to get them out. Um, I believe it's 60 or 62 caliber. Um, but I thought for demonstration purposes, um, and you know living history and such um i thought this might actually be a really good uh pistol to be able to do that um a lot of times i don't like to um, explain the whole you know how the flintlock works because i know i'm gonna have to clean my my gun i have a rifled pistol and a rifled um well a rifle and uh it takes longer to clean those and being that they're steel barrels and such, they will rust because of the corrosion of the black powder uh, that has been burned. But with this brass, not near as impaired with it. So here's another deal I'm noticing. This, uh, the tang screw is not set into the tang. That's something I'm going to have to fix. My main plan with this is to take the lock off take almost all of the parts off of it and hit them with uh with um some really fine grit sandpaper and knock this pol or try to like knock the polish off um actually maybe back up a little bit uh maybe what i'll just do is, essentially is going to brown them so may i'll take off some parts and and start seeing you know how like does the back of the frizzin um how well does it brown being that it's this polished um if it doesn't take the brown very well we're going to have to to figure to figure out what to do about it uh the brass i'm going to tarnish the stock i plan to um strip the the finish off of it and um and give it an antique look and hopefully at you know the end of a month of off and on projects with this um we can come back and look at this and say wow sterling you did at least a decent job but we'll see by the way i don't like how far back the hammer comes on this uh, this would be looks like a mid early to mid ketland style lock judging on the way the um 
the way the pan structure is here. Um, but watch, they do spark. So if I'm gonna, if I have, if I want to have the best chance possible to have this browning solution do its job, I can't have any oil or grease on this metal. Of course, what did they ship it in? They shipped it in oil and grease. And there's a whole bunch of it on the back side of the hammer. metal saturate small cotton cloth with browning solution and rub briskly on metal until wet all over no bubbles or spots an even blue green will form on metal within a few minutes wipe off with a clean cloth um okay so that i guess that's summed up Never rub back, only rub once. Even strokes. When applied, set aside for 10 to 12 hours in a humid place. Well, good thing the garage here is a humid place. So, now I did Dangler's Browning Solution. That's out of Fulton, uh, Michigan. And this was actually from um, uh, Track of the Wolf. I wanted to use Laurel Mountain. Um, at least I think that's what it was called. It's, I've done a lot of stuff with that over the past, um, uh, but I don't have that anymore and I couldn't, I couldn't find it. And I happen to be making a purchase at, uh, Track of the Wolf at the time. And so it was just convenient to try this stuff out. Yeah, I'm thinking this this stuff is way too polished. Just look how it wants to run off of there. Set that aside for a second. Take the tang screw out. Now this was sitting up, so I don't know. I guess I'm looking at it, what I could do. You can see this, let's see. See how that screw sits up? Now the hole is uh, concaved. So I'm thinking if I just grind off the top of this down, okay, there's that screw. I believe will be this pin here if I'm able to drive that out without any problems. Ha ha ha. Um I should be able to pull the barrel out. And the real real kicker is finding something in my garage that's going to suffice. For the project. I'm using triangular file to be honest. Moving rather easily. That's cool. And just like that. There we are. There's some Marks, May, January 31st of 2019. Cool. Well, that'll, that'll make that project a whole lot easier to uh, corrode or tarnish that.
and clean out the barrel channel a little bit. Put the pin back too. Taking the grip cap off. Okay, I'll be using clean strip um, varnish and fast paint uh, stripper. This is a non methylene chloride formula. So we'll see how see how that works. I could have sworn I had uh, some citrus based stuff, but I do not know what happened to it. I'd like something to put it on, to be honest. How about the old tachometer out of the. Uh, I believe this is out of, uh, might have been the old tachometer out of the 4640. At any rate, doesn't work anymore. So, being the goofy country bumpkin that I am, that's going to be my dish. Well, I got to find something to keep it level in. This stuff just absolutely stinks. I think I might even have to cut open the cut open the can. Well, we're in it to win it now. There's no no turning back from this. At any rate, to be honest, I figured I'm going to refinish this wood stock with somewhat of a patina anyway and what it came with is definitely not what i want so at this point it, it doesn't matter what it does to the finish on this wood Whatever the wood is that they use there in India, it is a very, it's a very light wood. I'm planning on experimenting with the, uh, what do you call it, the steel wool um, stuff to get an aged look to this wood. Not a lot, but a little bit. I did that with my pistol, and I actually like the way, my, my rifled pistol, and I actually like the way that turned out. So let's apply the whole half of the pistol. You care a little bit less in the barrel channel or in the uh, ramrod channel. Over here in this pan, I'm gonna do the distilled white vinegar and um, salt. 
And that's what we're going to use to corrode or tarnish this uh, brass barrel. So the stripper is working just like it should. You gotta be careful not to remove any wood, especially around where metal parts are going to be fitting in right next to it. Okay, I like how the paint or cheap finish, whatever they had on there is coming off. I'm gonna go have some lunch with the family. We'll come back and pick this up again. And we're back. So, I don't know how much salt to dump in. I don't really care, we'll find out. There's a whole lot of salt in there. Mix it around with something brass. And drop the barrel in here. That's going to be hard to get all of that tarnished the way I want. I really don't know what to do about the tip on this. So I think it's just going to do its thing. I'm going to try to dig this guy out. Now I said I wasn't going to do this. But I'm going to do it, and there's no harm. I'm going to push these out. And I don't know what I did with my pliers. There. All the brass pieces are in the supposed tarnishing solution.
I'm gonna have bottom of the barrel up. I'll show you. The salt hasn't quite dissolved yet. It will uh, once it uh, gets outside because it's about 75 degrees outside. This is the bottom of the barrel, as you can see, with all the, the markings. That's facing up um, simply because if... Uh, just make sure there's enough of the brass under... under the surface of the vinegar and salt. It actually seems that just moving the thing around with the, the leather on does a pretty decent job at loosening up a lot of this stuff right now. I don't know if, I don't know if you're able to see that. There you go. And here, I've been... Uh, I have the browning solution on it. Obviously there's gonna, it's gonna take several different um, layers or applications of it. Um, there's a frizzen spring there. You see it kinda does like a brown green tarnish sort of thing over here on the back of the frizzin it's like all you know rusty orange which is you know that's eventually what we're going to get so there you go this was the tang screw i ended up basically sawing off the top of it At any rate, and that, that fits in the tang nicely. Um, I got some wood screws there in varying degrees of um, browning stuff. So I'll keep you updated, but I assume I'm, I'm just going to leave this like this throughout the night. And uh, we'll see see what things look like tomorrow, if I'm able to even get to them tomorrow.